fantasy presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Phil in Puerto Rico. Hey, Phil, what's going on? Hey, Tom, doing great. Um, just wanted to thank you guys and the whole crew. Best content on the internet. Really appreciate everything you guys are doing. We appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. Phil, how did you find us? I just typed in live trading and YouTube one morning. Cool. I was looking for any type of live trading room you guys came up in. The, awesome. I know quality when I see it, or at least I like to think so. And uh, I mean, you guys are just a dream. I appreciate everything well, you guys do. Welcome to the Tiger family. Appreciate your growling uh, problem with us. Uh, my pleasure. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Don't make assumptions. Communicate with clarity. Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstanding, sadness, and drama. If all humans would communicate with impeccability of the word, all our relationships would change. There'd be no wars, no violence, and no misunderstandings. Market-wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 6, NASDAQ off 147, S&P's down 32, gold contract down $2, trading at $16.73 an ounce. We had silver down 49 cents, nineteen dollars twelve cents an ounce. Light sweet crude off two dollars sixty nine cents, eighty eight dollars forty two cents a barrel. Notes and bonds, a ten year note trading up six ticks right now at a price point of one eleven oh six. The thirty up sixteen at one twenty four twenty one. And king dollar, king dollars up one hundred and seventy nine ticks trading one thirteen three twenty nine. The euro is at ninety seven. The yen is at, out here at a price point of uh, 145, and the British pound is at 109 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. I want know what's going on in your world. So the 10-year note right now, folks, is yielding 3.944. No, 3.933. And the high is 3.945. So we're going to go over... And look at this bond first, because this is all about bonds. Well, it's not all about, but bonds and currencies are moving the market in a monster way. So we take a look at this. Yep, I can see it. Okay, so last low, well, that was the high, 110.19. You got to 110.21 out here. Real question is, is it going to be able to get off this baby? Well... Here's how it shakes out, man. This is going to be interesting. So, 110.19 is the low. That had 2.9 million contracts. So, one, we're at 1.4. Yesterday, hey, we'll, we'll see. I mean, this is saying that there's a lot less sellers down at this area. And, you know, of course, this went straight down from 122, you know, down to 118. I mean, 110. Yeah, 110, 19. So bottom line is that, you know, you could get a bounce going. There's no doubt about that. So now let's go look at the broad market. Let's go take a look at the S&P first. We'll take a look at the SPY. What you have with the SPY is this. So you're going into the swing point, which is uh, 357.04. We broke it. Um, that's 153 million shares. Now, we're only at 64 million shares, so this is a big number, man, meaning that if this can close above the 357.04 today, you're going to get action. I mean, this is acting, I can tell you this, this is acting like it wants to make a, a bottom that's going to last for a while. Now, my take is that we're going to go a lot lower in the S&P, meaning about another 500 points, but when you have a... a, a the way this is coming into lows, um, it looks to me that we're making a bottom. What I mean by that is this. Bottoms that last a longer period of time actually do something like this, like we're done today. First, you test. Yeah, yesterday was a test. 
you know, bottom line was Columbus Day, but the bottom line, the volume was a lot less. Today's a lot less. And normally when you're trying to get off something like this, you know, the nerves are, are there. I mean, I can see in this case here, you went up, you pulled all the way back in about two seconds flat. And we know that we got the CPI coming out tomorrow. We take a look at the Qs. Now, the Qs are in, in a different ball game. They, they just are. I mean, you know, they they broke lower. The real question, I mean, the Qs, in order to get to higher price, have to get to 269.28. Uh, the volume's contracting. There's, there's no doubt about that. Volume's contracting. But guess what? <laughs> that, that's about it, man. Because when you take a look at inside the Qs, you got Amgen up 5.3%. Micron's up 2.8. Walgreens Boots is up 2. Taken away from it. Now, this is the killer, man. Lamb's down 7.8%. Clack is down 7.5. You know, we've talked about this so many times, man. The bottom line is that the chips take you up, the chips take you down, and the chips are getting killed. So, and Lamb Research, look at this. This is an ABC down, man. This is a 453. This is a monster, too. You got... Uh, what? So that's four, what did I say? 53? So there's 53 plus, what is that number? 50, plus 40, 90, 90, 98. That gets you 308. Oh, you're 324. I see it's a 308. It's down 25 bucks out here. 304 is the ABC down. Yeah. Now look at this. 309 is the high of the low, I think, of May 2020. These, this, folks, the, the, the COVID high, the COVID bar is what everything's going after, man. There it is right there. Look at that. Yep, 309, man. That's the highs of the lows. And you can see, I mean, the bottom line is that we went up. You come off the highs with volume. Yeah. Let's get over the oil market. So the oil's taking a hit out here. Uh, get the active contract. It looks like you get some volume on this hit too, man. Okay, so you get 284,000 contracts. Nah, volume's not that high. We made a, yeah, volume's not that high. You need another day like uh, with heavier volume than today. You know, what's, what's stopping in its tracks, though, is uh, the downdraft that was established out here on the 20th of August. That's when oil went from uh, 96 to $90. That stopped it in its tracks on the way up. There's no doubt about that. So we'll see where that whole baby's going to shake out. And we'll also see, you know, what kind of uh, traction you're going to get coming into this close. Because uh, right now, they're, they're pressing, they just pressed out the lows, uh, meaning took out the lows. And the real question is going to be, now, this is what ends up happening. Because it's only quarter past three, taking out the lows, this would be the time you, you want to take out the lows if you think you're going to get a turnaround. You don't want to take those lows out at quarter of four. You know, 45 minutes left, yeah, you can see it's called a spike low, folks. You come into the low, you test the low, then you spike the low, and then you get out of the low. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Monk Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? 
Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is down 34. You get the Nasdaq off 163. S&Ps are off 35. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil does an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get the opening call, folks. Come over to our new website at TFNN. You go into newsletters. You're going to see it right on the, right, the left-hand side. And just hit subscribe. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $695, which is a savings of $199 at 22%. And you can get it for one full year for $1195, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, what happens is that they it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. So you can keep it for 29 days. It works for you. Awesome. If it doesn't work for some reason, you can just let, let us know. We'll give you your money back. And when you get Basil's newsletter, he has approximately 10 to 12 archives out there, so you'll really understand how he looks at the market and how to ride that wave. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. Well, looking at waves, you can see the different <laughs> waves that we have in the Dow. Uh, look at this daily chart. We made it in the Chapman wave. We made a peak after 34,281 on the 16th of August. We pulled back, held the 200 period moving average that on the left side chart, this yellowish orange line. Uh, bounced a little bit. That's where we went sh uh, short via the uh, DOG. And we remain short because that for us is an intermediate term position. On the very near term, we've been trying every, uh, at least uh, almost every day, to buy the diamonds on a pullback. And actually, each time they've given a nice little bounce and then they've taken us out and they've gone to lower lows. Um, we did the same thing today. It had a really strong, it had a five point move up from uh, when we got in. We raised the stop, so we're out for a little bit of a profit. But really, the, the idea was that in this H pattern, and let me just show you something here for those of you who are new to my work. And I'll do a little bit more in my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour at 10 a.m. tomorrow. I'll show some of these charts with these straight line up moves the cup and the arch formation and what happens when you have a combination of the two in this case red because if at a peak a or a b the first or second peak it starts to roll over most of the time it'll test the left side low if it breaks that low you have to do an assessment and look what happened right here that peak a minus that was way back in august it made a little h pattern i call them the dreaded h it looks like an h and took it out and went sliding sharply lower it did the same thing early september ran up to an a and then failed a minus when zipping down 
couldn't hold the uh, Chapman Wave inside track support uh, level right there. And now we've done the same thing. And what I was saying in my show today is that <clears throat> in this particular move, the third or fourth bars to the downside is where you get this tremendous acceleration. So the fact that we had this spike to the nine period moving average, this little pink line right here was really important because if we didn't have that and then we had the sell off, we would have had that extension that says uh, very quickly in the art formation, if it starts to cascade lower, it'll go straight down and test that left side low, which is at Dow 28,715. So, so far, we've held it, trying to come back. Now the Dow's up three. It was up over 300 points earlier on. It went down uh, sharply moments ago, and now it's trying to come back. So what I thought I would do right now is I'll explain, just in the, ba in the basis of what I'm always looking at, what would constitute a nice turn to the upside, one that has, that generates some momentum, not rather than these two, three, four-day bounces, and then it fails, so something that can last a little longer. So within that context, you can see the MACD, that's this, uh, these two lines right here, the moving average convergence divergence. It's cross positive and as hell. That means the 0% line has gone above zero instead of being negative. So that's one, one important factor. The stochastic is above the 20% level. It's a 35. That's just okay, but it, but it is having a a very good divergence from the low that was made at 28,715. And this little pink line, if you can see it right there, that's the nine period moving average. The black line is the 14 period moving average. And look what happened when they crossed negative uh, right there on that big plunge. That was August, or was it 22nd, or was it 26th? Yes. Um, that's where it turned pink, and it hasn't turned green yet. So for me, it's really important to get more of a sustained move. In other words, you can have the torque, the, 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 the kind of pull off from the first and second gear from the bottom, but you've got to get the momentum and the MACD gives the momentum. And then the confirmation for me is the nine period turns green because it goes over the 14 period moving average. We're still very far. And that would say that you have to get to this jab wave inside track repellent zone, these green and, and purple uh, lines, little mini channel on the downside, and that you have to get above that. And that's going to take a lot of effort. And if we can do it, say, by end of next week, we're actually trading about 30,500 in the Dow. That'll be the first time that we've seen some kind of upside uh, turnaround that can generate more time and price. And you can see the same thing in the weekly chart. And talking about those channels, you remember last week we were talking about the volatility index, and I said it's really interesting that uh, the volatility index, I call this the inside track where you just join outer perimeters, that is the, the candles or the wick on the upside, and they lower lows from the high that was made at 38.94 in the weekly chart back in the week of the 28th of January. And uh, each successively spiked to the upside, couldn't break that green line right. right up until three weeks ago. We went to 34.88. That's the week of September the 30th. Then we had a, a pullback. And now we've got a candle that I call the Chapman Wave Roman candle, this candle right here. And it says at any point, if this particular instrument that you're following, in this case, it's the VIX index on the weekly chart, starts to close on a daily basis, it has to be a shorter time frame. Uh, below 30.50, that'll be, for the market, it'll be a very bullish thing. So I've got the parameters set. Unfortunately, right now, as we're looking at it, what is it, with uh, 25, 35 minutes to go to the end of the day, this is the first time on a weekly basis that you've had a consecutive move higher above this trend line, this uh, inside track narrow, wedge, uh, narrow uh, channel, and it's just a little bit above at 33.94. Hasn't taken out the 34.88 high of three weeks ago. So this, to me, is very important. Within the next few days, going to now, what is that chart, Bezel? Bezel. Oh, sorry, that's the volatility in oh, the VIX. VIX. Okay, yeah, yeah, I got it. Okay, right. Okay, yeah. So it's really important that that this starts to pull back and then hold under 30 for this mark to to really garner some kind of upside momentum. And I'm looking at a weekly chart, so we'll go Friday to Friday. So how it's only Tuesday, 
Yeah. How it closes Friday is going to be very important. If we start to close above 35, that's going to increase the selling pressure. But the other thing is we've got a U-shaped pattern in the daily chart. <clears throat> we haven't made a turn, but I'll just show you that if we get this, the vertical line, you can see on this vertical line, the um, MACD was very strong. Stochastic was very, I'm just trying to move it over one bar. There it is. Now you can see it. And the, the stochastic fell. But right now, both are much weaker than they were. So this is a hint to say, what's the volatility index? If it finally starts to pull back sharply, that could be a big help. And tomorrow, Marsha, I'll talk about these um, inside tracks. I've got them in many of the charts. Very important uh, things that I look at. Awesome, man. Appreciate it. Have a great night, safe night. Look forward to the show tomorrow, Basil. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you. you. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow Industrial is up five. The Nasdaq's down 151. S&P's are up 32. Now, check this out, folks, okay? So this is what just tanked the market. Now, this is really going to be wild how, watching how this shakes out. So what you, what you had intraday, uh, the bank of... Uh, uh, England's uh, governor, who runs to be like uh, Powell, is in Washington, D.C. right now, right? Well, the bottom line, he comes out in the middle of the day and he tells all the owners of bonds in England that they have until Friday. Okay, this Friday. Now, when they intervene, they intervened uh, basically 10 days ago, okay? And when they intervened, folks, okay, they told the market then that they would intervene for two weeks, and that's it. Well, what happened is that Andrew Bailey came out and says, I'm telling you, well, here, here it is. My message to the funds involved and all the firms is you've got three days left now. Bailey said in an event in Washington a few minutes ago, you've got to get this done, okay? 
The bank earlier on Tuesday expanded, the, check out what they did, okay, so they, they expanded the range of its bond buying program to include inflation-linked debt to avert what it called a fire sale that threatens financial stability. While the central bank has always said it will support its support will end Friday, this coming Friday. A lobbying group representing the pension funds urged Bailey to extend the program at least until the end of the month. The bottom line, folks, is this. I, I, I think this market is going to come back myself. We were talking about, you know, I didn't know that this was going on. Not that it made any difference, cause, but because it is what it is, volume, price, that's all that really matters. But this is what, so pitch this. Big funds are playing chicken with their central bank. Because this is what it comes down to. The central bank is saying, so let me walk you, I'm going to go back two weeks ago right now. There wasn't any bids, folks, bids and offers. And their market froze. That's the bottom line. And as soon as this is over, it will freeze again, okay? So what the central bank is saying, if you want to sell these things, you better sell them before Friday. And the losses will be extraordinary, too, by the way, folks. That's why they, they're probably not selling as many as they, they should be selling. And he just reiterated it right there. And that's why you saw the pound. If we bring the pound up, right, you're going to see the pound get smoked, too. So the, the real chicken here is going to be, you know, what do they do? You know, this is what it comes down to. Uh, there it is. You can see how this, see how this shook out, man. The, the pound went from a price point of uh, 111 to 109. Right. You know, so that's what you have happening. And that's that essence there, too, by the way, folks, is the heavier part of contagion and how. Oh, sorry. No shots. OK, hold on one second. Fix that. Sorry about that, man. How did I forget that? OK. Um, contagion, you know, is the deal on a continual basis that can basically wreck markets. And listen, you know what the bottom line is? It's always people, uh, uh, big funds that are over their heads. That's, that's, that's what it comes down to, okay? And, and what happens, it seems to always happen too, uh, by the way, inside of the bond market. And the reason is this. Here, let me show you something. This is the reason. I trade bonds, so I, I, <laughs> I know these things upside down. But you're going to see that it's hard to comprehend just what an individual trader um, can basically do, never mind to fund. So an individual trader, folks, okay, can carry $100,000 of U.S. bonds for $2,200, 2.2%, right? That's me, okay? That's me and you. Yeah, imagine what a fund is carrying those at, okay? So you don't need a lot of movement, okay, for bonds to basically, you know, take you to the cleaners in about two seconds, you know? The, the reason that the leverage is so high is that you don't normally see monster moves like that. That's what's going on. But yet, inside of the guilt market, what you had is that when that new trust, the, the prime minister came out, cut the taxes for the richest, um, it canned the market. Because the bottom line is that you have to pay your bills. They changed that, but guess what? It didn't matter because now, so picture what ends up happening now. What happens now is that large traders know, right? Everyone knows after this one. Everyone knows that the U.K. is on shaky ground right now. And the pension funds of the U.K. are on shaky ground. And anyone doing business in the U.K. is on shaky ground. So guess what? It's not just going to be the U.K. <laughs> That's not how this comes down, man. You know, I like the idea that... Uh, our market here, okay, so let's go over and take a look at it because what, what did happen right when we were coming off the close, right, is that they both spiked the low. That's exactly what they did. If we take a look at this, the real question is going to be, can it get any juice in the next uh, 25 minutes? You know, you can see the spike. The first low that was out there was established. This is at the NQs. That was established at 780, 788. Yeah, 788, and the next one went to 767. That's what you'd like to see, you know. But now what you need, now you need the acceleration going all the way up to really flip people out. On the S&Ps, it just made it also. If we take a look at the S&Ps, you're going to see the same, same type of setup. Whoops. So the first low there was at 580. 3580, yeah, and it went 3579. Now what you need 
So that, you know, now I need an acceleration uh, to say that, okay, I can shake that off, man. These, <laughs> we're all going to learn a lot again. It, 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 the, uh, the aspect of um, contagion is more important than just about anything out here because the interlinking of these large players is huge. Um, and, you know, the derivative positions are huge. And so when it moves, uh, the bottom line, it moves. And so what you're going to see, uh, which is going to be wild, it's not going to be here, man. I mean, what you're going to see in the UK, you know, we, we are going to, bottom line, see losses of those pension funds that are going to be astronomical numbers, folks, okay? And after this warning here, We'll see who's going to blink. Is the, Fed, is the, 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 the central bank going to blink, or is it going to be the pension funds? You know, and we'll we'll find out. It's 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 that cut and dry, though, man. That's that's what's that's what's going on here. So let's go take a look at some of the higher volume equities, and this is going to be a still low volume market out here. We have Advanced Micro is uh, down forty five cents. You get Uber down uh, three bucks. We have uh, Bank of America off eighty five cents. Draft Kings are off uh, eight cents. We go uh, Microsoft's down three eighty seven. Let's go take a look at Microsoft. That you know, they're all, well, listen, all the stocks have been getting hammered. What I'm looking for Microsoft is I'm looking for the. Um, uh, look at that, my oh man, Microsoft's an ABC down. That's not good. One, let's see this thirty seven, thirty five. Yeah, one second. Oh, Two sixty seven. 35, that's 215, you're 225. Yeah, this is, this is, Microsoft can go lower. And so it's, this is gonna be something to keep an eye on, man. Uh, you got the Dow up, but 45. If this, we have enough time right now. See, if this can shake this off and just take half of back, of what we just came down on on that on that type of news, that that'll be a number, man. That'll be a number. The, and what the dollar didn't do, the dollar didn't take out its high from last night. The dollar almost got there and then backed out. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is up 16, NASDAQ's down 143, S&Ps are off 30. If you're watching Tiger TV, folks, I just put a chart up of the GILT. So the GILT is like our 10-year, this is a 10-year GILT, okay? So this is like our 10-year bond. I just want to show you how this acceleration was unbelievable. So... When this goes back to August 1st, uh, yeah, August 2nd, actually. So picture, August 2nd, the, the bonds are paying 1.7%, right? When this imploded, so it was a straight line up going all the way up until uh, the 20, 20th of September. By then, the bonds were 3.1, which just that in itself is unbelievable, okay? Then what ends up happening, that's when the prime minister comes out and says, we're going to cut the taxes for the you know, super rich. And then it, the bond market exploded to 3.1 to 4.5. And right now we're at 4.43. So let me give you an idea how this works in the context of, let's say that we own bonds. All these pension funds own the bonds, okay? They bought the bonds and they bought them for sure. Well, let's see. The, the interest rates were like low all over the world, okay? So the bottom line is that I suspect principle-wise, folks, principle-wise, they can be down at least 20%. They might be down 30%. And that's why they're hesitating in the aspect of selling. Now, watch how this shakes out. And all these tigers and tigers, I know you know this, but I just want to relate it just in case some folks don't. So if you kept the 10-year bond that you have, right, there's no problem with that, okay? The bottom line is that you keep a 10-year bond. You knew you bought a 10-year bond. You bought it for what the interest rate was. Bottom line, guess what? You wouldn't lose a dime, okay, on what you bought. But that's not how they do it, folks. What they do, and this is us. Thanks, Jimmy, because I got, I got all these tigers are so smart. Tigers, this is awesome, man. So what do they do? They, the banks turn around, and here we go. And they pledge... Uh, one of our targets here says all those pension funds pledge their guilt holdings as collateral for swaps and derivatives, and hence the margin calls, and that's exactly what it is. They use that for to do another derivative trade, okay? So the bottom line is that they're getting called on that because what you just had, you had the interest rates just go up 300%, okay? So the bottom line, that was, those are going to be wipeouts, and those, yeah, that's, that's the bottom line. It's, and, and it's going to be a wipeout, man. Um, I, I'm being kind. I, I, I was trying to find a bond quickly in between the, the break there so I could see exactly what it was priced at. I couldn't do it quick enough. I, I'm being kind at 20%, you know? I mean, it could be a lot worse than that. Because the way, the, you know how this goes, folks, the way that, that prices are in bonds, that the higher the interest rate goes, the principal number goes lower. Well, here, we can see it. Here, let me show you on the 10-year. You're gonna see how this goes. So. If we, uh, yeah, let's just do it with this so you can kind of see how this works. So you can see just in our own market, uh, TY1, let me put this, just in our own market so you can see generic one. There we go. Okay. So you can see in the last six months, right, uh, the last three months, if you bought a bond, you bought a 10-year bond, okay, at 122000 that was only a $100,000 bond because that's how that works, Okay. Well, guess what? 
Now it's only worth 111,000. So you've already taken a 10% hit to the downside. And the bottom line is that you are at a rate of, let me do it this way now. Now I gotta go like this. Okay, so uh, let me do it this way. Let me see. I think I can do this way. I'll try this one. No. Well, bo bottom line is that you're, you're at a smaller rate, and what ends up happening is that that's that's what ends up happening is that you have the the aspect of as the rates go higher, your principal rate goes down, and the mind blower, okay, is this the mind blower is that they were all paying more than a hundred cents on the dollar for the bonds to start with. That's what's really bizarre. So you're going to lose. They're going to lose on the principal. And that's why you can have a type of implosion that you haven't. So we'll see where it shakes out. Let's go to the uh, well. Let's go to the NQs first and see if we can get any traction in here. We know we know we got the spike on the way down. The real question is, is that how far can you get up in another 16 minutes? Well, there's not a buyer in there yet, but you know, guess what? We're off the low, and you're inside the range again. So, you know, we'll see whether this can get up to the uh, 920, 10,920. Right now, you're at 826. We're going to the uh, the E-minis. We take a look at the E-minis. And th you know what's wild? This is what's kind of, you know, these these things always come out of nowhere when you have volatile markets like this. And the E-mini, yeah, the, we'll see what it can, E-mini, what would that be? 27. That'd be 28 points to finish out flat. Because if we did that, then that, that still would be set up uh, that is still be a rejection of lower price, man. And then tomorrow, there's going to be big action tomorrow because I, the action tomorrow goes like this. We get the CPI, then we get the Fed minutes at uh, 2 o'clock. So the Fed minutes are going to be a big deal. Um, people tonight are going to be watching the gilt market and England in a monster way. And I suspect as soon as that came across, the large broker deals and the large banks you know, Jamie Dimon, he's screaming right now at his uh, traders, like, how much liability do we have in that market? And just how far out are some of these large corporations? That's, that's the bottom line. That's where it comes down to, man. Um, and that's what's going to make it or break it, you know, because the, the real question does, when, when, oh, is the CPI on Thursday? Okay, so the CPI is Thursday, sorry. Thursday morning, yeah. So tomorrow, tomorrow. So, to, oh, the PPI. Oh, the PPI is tomorrow. Okay, PPI is tomorrow. CPI is on Thursday. Um, you know, we, we get we're gonna have volatility all over the place. That's the bottom line. I my I, my take, folks, is that we get a, we get a bottom in here. I you know you heard what I said at the beginning. I like when this actually happens. Um, meaning, I didn't know that this would happen because this just came across the tape simultaneously after this whole market tank. So, um, you know, that would, that wasn't new information, okay? But the bottom line is that it's interesting that he probably didn't want to get eggs thrown at him if he had said that when he was in the UK instead of in Washington, D.C. Either that or he's in Washington, D.C., as some of our targets saying, pleading for help from our own Federal Reserve, you know? which, you know, they're going to be out there pleading for help. There's no doubt about it. And this is where the question comes down is that, okay, you know, the, the way that our Fed, and we've seen the pressure that's being put all, all over the place. Like, it's like, oh. And you know what's you know, amazing to me, actually? You know, I hear some of these guys on, on Bloomberg, and now, you know, they're all blaming Powell and blaming the Fed and all that. And guess what? They were all bulls in the way up, and they loved all the money on the way up. So, you know, I mean... I, are you serious, man? Okay. Oh yeah. Now it's all his fault because this, this, there's been money coming in the market for as long as I've been in the market, man. I mean, who's kidding who? You know? I mean, whether it's Greenspan, Bernanke. I mean, the, the yeah. I mean, they've been throwing market every time there's a downdraft. They throw money in the market, right? They weren't they weren't screaming then, were they? Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. Dow's down 13. Nasdaq's up 146. S and P's down 32. We'll come right back.
The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now up 27. NASDAQ is uh, down 134. S&P is off uh, 27. Uh, yeah, uh, one of our targets just mentioned this in the den. Uh, Peloton, right? Now, this is this is another deal of over leverage, man. This is these these are always sad stories, man. This is like crazy. So Peloton's at eight dollars and seventy six cents. Well, the CEO and founder, folks. The bottom line is that when he basically, you know, got off the board, he had to get off the board. Why? Because guess what? He leveraged his shares at monster prices, okay? And the bottom line, Peloton has, has fell, fallen 95%, okay? Um, so the bottom line, uh, you know, he repeated, repeated margin calls that he borrowed against the Peloton shares um, from Goldman Sachs. The thing that blows my mind is that you'd think that they'd have someone close to them. You know, there's a million ways, not a million ways, there's as many ways though you can basically put collars on these and, you know, basically take care of yourself and not get croaked. Because um, that is a replay of uh, 2000. And the real question is gonna be if he got some of these on options. So watch how this goes, this is sick. If he got these on options and he took the option and didn't sell it, the bottom line, he's gonna have a tax bill that's phenomenal, even though the stock is down, which is, yeah, that's how it works, man. So, bad scene, and guess what? You know, leverage is fine, folks, uh, if you know, you know, stay within your means of leverage. You, if you go outside your means of leverage, you're gonna blow up. No, if it's about, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's gonna happen. So, you know, protect yourself, man, just don't do it. 
Mark and Wise here, we're getting a little pop. So it's, it's shaking it off a little, nothing heavy, but this, this, ain't, this ain't bad. This is a start. This is a start. That's what it comes down to. Because with this type of news, that's heavy news, man. That's heavy news. That's a heavy banker story type of news that there's going to be losses coming in that are extraordinary, and you have three days to sell, right? Pretty amazing. Always remember, folks, the bank can claw your heart out. The bull can run you over. And thank God, there's always another trade. Health, happiness, and prosperity. Have a great night, folks. Have a safe night. Come back and visit Tommy tomorrow morning. Kicks us off 9 in the morning. We're going to have the uh, CPI and PPI coming out at 8.30. So there's going to be real action there. Look at them, folks.